He remembered the wild oats he had planted as an adolescent. Sea oats were restless, but their cousins, the wild oats, were hyperactive. They had fought him savagely, their stems slashing across his wrists as he tried to harvest a ripe ear. He had gotten it, but had been uncomfortably scratched and abraded before getting clear of the patch. He had planted those, f f he had planted those few wild seeds in the secret plot behind his house and watered them every day, the natural way. He had guarded the bad-tempered shoots from all harm, his anticipation, his anticipation growing. What an adventure for a teenage male, until his mother, Bianca, had discovered the plot. Alas, she had recognized the species instantly. There had been a prompt family hassle. How could you? Bianca demanded, her face flaming. But Roland had labored to suppress his, his admiring smile. Sowing wild oats, he murmured, the lads growing up. Now, Roland, you know that, dear. It isn't as if there's any real harm in it. No harm, she exclaimed indignantly. It's a perfectly natural urge for a young man. But her furious expression had halted Bink's father, who feared nothing in Xanth, but was normal, normally a peaceable man. Roland sighed and turned to Bink. I gather you do know what you were doing, son. Bink felt excruciatingly defensive. Well, yes, the nymph of the oats. Bink, Bianca snapped warmly. He had never seen her so angry before. Roland held up his hands, making peace. Dear, why don't you let us work this out, man to man? The boy's got a right. And so Roland had be betrayed his own bias when his man to man chat was with Bink. It was with a boy. Without another word, Bianca had stalked out of the house. Roland turned to Bink, shaking his head in a gesture that was only nominally negative. Roland was a powerful, handsome man, and he had a special way with gestures. A genuine wild oaks, called thrashing from the stem, sown by the full moon, watered with your own urine, he inquired frankly, frankly, and Bink nodded, his face at half heat, so that when the plant, so that when the plants mature and the oat, oat nymph manifest, she will be bound to you, the fer fertilizer figure, Bink nodded grimly, son, believe me, I comprehend the attraction, I sowed wild oats myself when I was your age, Got me a nymph, too, with flowing green hair and a body like the great outdoors. But I had forgotten about the special watering, and so she escaped. So she escaped me. I never saw anything so lovely in my life. Except your mother, of course. Roland had sown wild oats. Bink had never imagined such a thing. He remained silent, afraid of what was coming. I made the mistake of confessing about the oats to Bianca, Roland continued. I fear she became somewhat sensitized on the subject, and you caught the brunt, and you caught the brunt. These things happen. So his mother was jealous of something that had happened in his father's life before he married her. What a pitful of concept Bink had stumbled into unwittingly. Roland's face became serious. To a young man, inexperienced, the notion of a lovely, nude, captive nymph may be phenomenally tempting, he continued. All the physical attributes of a real woman and none of the mental ones. But, son, this is a juvenile dream, like finding a candy tree. The reality really would not be all you anticipated. One quickly becomes surfeited, tired of unlimited candy, and so it is also with with a mindless female body. A man cannot love a nymph. She might as well be air. His ardor rapidly turns to boredom and to disgust. Still, Bink did, dared not comment. He would not have become bored, he was sure. Roland understood him too well. Son, what you need is a real live girl, he concluded. A figure with a personality who will talk back to you. It is far more challenging to develop a relationship with a complete woman, and often extremely frustrating. He glanced meaningfully at the door through which Bianca had departed. But in the long run, it is also far more rewarding. What you sought in the wild, or uh, wild oats was a shortcut. But in life, there are no shortcuts, he smiled. Though, if it had been up to me, I would let you try that shortcut. No harm in it, no harm at all. But your mother, well, we have a conservative culture here, and the ladies tend to be the most conservative, especially the pretty ones. It's a small village, smaller than it used to be, so everybody knows his neighbor's business. So we are circumscribed, know what I mean? Bink nodded uncertainly. When his father laid down the law, however circumspectly, that was final. No more oats. Your mother, well, she was caught by surprise by your growing up. The oats are out. She's probably rooting them up right this instant. But you still have a lot of good experience ahead of you. Bianca might like to think you would think of you as a little boy forever, but even she can't balk nature, not for more than five seconds. So she'll simply have to go along with it. Roland paused, but Bink was silent again, unsure of what his, unsure of what his father was leading to, up to. 
There's a girl due to move here from one of the lesser villages, Roland continued. Theoretically, this is for proper schooling, since we have the best centaur schoolmasters in Zamp, but I suspect the underlying reason is that there simply aren't many eligible boys in her village. I understand she has not yet discovered her magic talent, and she's about your age. He paused to glance meaningfully at Bink. I think she could use a handsome, healthy young man to show her around and warn her of local hazards. I understand she is extremely smart and pretty and soft-spoken. A rare combination. Then Bink began to understand. A girl, a real girl, for him to get to know. One who would not be prejudiced by his lack of magic. And Bianca would not be able to disapprove, thought he, though privately she might dislike the fact of Bink's new masculine drives. His father had given him a viable option. Suddenly, he realized he could do without wild oats. Her name is Sabrina, Roland said. A light ahead brought Bink back to the present. Someone was standing by Justin Tree, holding a magic lamp. It is all right, it is all right Bink, Justin's voice said in the air beside him. Sabrina bought, brought help, but it wasn't needed. Did you get the sponge? I got it, Bink said. So, was a, so his little adventure had been no adventure at all, just like his life. As Sabrina helped him pack the sponge around Justin's wound, Bink realized that he had decided he could not go on this way. He could not go on this way, a non-entity. He would go to see the good magician Humphrey and learn what his magic talent was. He glanced up. His eyes caught those of Sabrina, glowing by the light of the lamp. She smiled. She was even more lovely now than she had been when he first met her so many years ago, when they had both been adolescents, and she had always been true to him. There was no question. Bink's father had been correct about the advantages and frustrations of a real live girl. Now it was up to Bink to do what he had to do to become a real live man.